Um, so, uh, good morning and welcome to this talk. Um, this, uh, uh, today I'll present joint work with uh, John Fionnli, Sven Sheva and Li Jun Sang. Um, <clears throat> before we actually come to continuous time Markov games, I want to start with a uh, more simple model, the continuous time Markov chains. Well, you all know uh, discrete time Markov chains, uh, um, the standard notion of Markov chain. Uh, in continuous time Markov chain, we simply add a notion of time, so we, um, of probabilistic time. Um, the time when the next transition happens is not uh, anymore, well, a unit distance, but is, um, 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 uh, but of course, this probability, dist pro probability distribution, the exponential probability distribution. And uh, the rate from one state to another indicates the, um, the parameter according to which the uh, distribution is scaled. <coughs> we have uh, several um, um, transitions like here in this small example. Um, we take, or well, we let both experiments run in parallel and take the first transition that fires. Um, this is the same as saying uh, we add the two rates and let one experiment uh, run, and when this fires, we jump to one or the other depending on uh, um, their ratio. So, yeah. If we um, now consider games, the only thing that comes uh, into play is, uh, are the, the actions. So in each location, we offer several actions uh, from which we can choose, and uh, the uh, rate matrix also takes this into account. So for every rate, for, action, for every action, we might offer different rates to our successor states. Um, the problem we consider is the time-bounded reachability problem, or time-bounded reachability probability problem. Um, and here also our two players come to play. Um, we divide the space of locations into the sets of uh, uh, minimizing locations and maximizing locations, or, or the location of the minimizing player and the maximizing player, respectively. And um, um, so these, these players try to maximize or minimize the time-bounded reachability probability. This is that we have a time bound, and we want to be in a certain st uh, state or in a certain set of states at uh, when the time runs out. The good news is that an optimal solution to this exists, so there ex exist optimal strategies for the players. And uh, in this talk, uh, we'll now cover the efficient approximation of these probabilities. If you now take a, a look at the um, simple model of continuous time Markov chains, um, we, um, well, this kind of corresponds to um, the transient probability. So there, of course, we have no optimization problem. We just uh, want, we just well, it is just one value we, want, we can compute. And we know that the trans transient probabilities in continuous time Markov chains occur to the Kolmogorov equations, or also, to be more precise, to the Kolmogorov backward equations. So, I don't want, no, okay. So, we know the probability values at one certain point in time, that is, if the time has run out, if we have no time left, of course, we either are in the, uh, in the goal region or we are not. So, there the probabilities are fixed. And then with the Kolmogorov backward equations, we can develop these probabilities backwards in time until we have our time bound. So, um, um, so if you have not understood what the model is all about, you can also just look at the, um, these equations. This is all we are going to approximate, of course, the control version of this. Um, for a fixed scheduler, um, we can easily extend these equations um, to continue some mark of games. The only thing that changes is that we, uh, that we ask the scheduler which action he wants to choose. Um, um, and he, of course, may choose a different action for every location and for every point in time. Um, the control problem I, I was talking about, um, the maximal reachability probability problem, um, um, uh, now looks like this. Um, we, well, it's not surprising that um, we can the, the, the point-wise optimization of the um, uh, of the reachability of the optimal choice of action um, um, leads to the optimal reachability probabilities. Um, this is also a special case of the Bellman equations, if you know them. Um, a small example um, here. Let's consider this uh, small 
continuous time Markov game, which, which has actually only one place. So we could call it also a continuous time Markov decision process. Um, if time has run out, so if our time bound of one has, uh, has passed, we know that we either are in the, in, in the winning region or not. And if we consider here, as here in this, this plot, um, the reachability probabilities for location A, then of course there's a probability of zero to reach it. And from this point on backwards, we can develop these uh, probabilities. Here I have done it for three schedulers to either always choose action B, to either always to, um, choose action A, or the optimal uh, probability, uh, the optimal strategy would be to switch at this point in time. And then, uh, 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 well, in, in this region, I think, to take action B, and when we have more time left, take action A. Um, a, bri uh, a brief overview of, of the results of our paper uh, is that, uh, so we developed an approximation algorithm um, that has an improved worst case um, complexity in the, um, in the maximal error we want to allow for. Um, previous methods had a worst case complexity of t over pi, so that is quite bad if we have, want to have a really precise result. Um, and we improved it to the kth root of t over pi, which, well, of course, this, uh, well, we cannot use just any k. There's no free lunch, um, but I'll come to that later. Let's for now just say we can take small constants, like 3, 4, 5, maybe 10. Um, let's look at um, different approximation methods. Um, for CTMCs, there's this well-known approximation technique of uniformization, which works amazingly fast. Uh, however, it does not um, it does not extend to control problems, so it's difficult to extend this. I know that there is some uh, related work on this. Um, we will later compare to that, um, but it is not applicable in the direct sense. Um, um, Rung and Kurta could, or Rung and, 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 and similar numerical methods could be in principle applied. Uh, however, they assume, or for, for their, um, for the, well, their analysis of, of precision uh, um, relies on the fact that all the derivatives exist as, at least to, to, uh, to the fourth derivative. And here we see that the second derivative of, of, of our reachability probabilities um, are not continuous. Um, uh, therefore, um, this, uh, the, the, um, the result that the Runge-Kutta algorithms uh, could give us um, is not essentially better than the Euler method. Speaking of the Euler method, so we will uh, take a lo closer look at the uh, Euler method now. Um, um, the Euler method, well, you all know it, is, it is to um, partition the total available time um, into small intervals of length epsilon. And, re uh, and we, well, assume that we know the reachability probabilities for the right fringe of the interval and want to compute the uh, reachability probabilities of the left fringe of the interval and then iterate over the state space. In our case, this means that we replace latter part of the equation just by the constants, that is by, by the optimal reachability probabilities of the right fringe. So we assume this to be constant throughout this interval, and then we can, well, then we just have to, a linear combination over a constant. We, we have, we maximize over different constants, uh, that's easy. We integrate, and we have our reachability probabilities for the left fringe. Um, assuming a constant estimate, introduces a linear error, that is uh, an, an error of order epsilon in our, um, um, in the derivative of the um, reachability probability here. If we integrate over that, that becomes a, a square error, which is um, rather small, but um, it forces, or it, it, it leads to the fact that we have to choose, so if we want to achieve a global error of pi, we have to choose t over pi many intervals so uh, we have to iterate t over pi many times over our state space. If you now imagine we want a precision of, say, 10 to the power of minus 9, that is quite bad. We have to iterate a lot of times. So we might want something, uh, uh, something, something better here. Now, um, now comes, comes the clue. Um, we, um, so assuming or assuming this to be constant, or replacing the reachability probabilities in the equation by constant is, I, I, one could argue, essentially the same as assuming, or at least one assumption that is behind this, that it works, is that at most one uh, step may happen during the interval. 
just one jump in our process may happen within the interval. And how can we justify that? For that, we take a look at the Poisson distributions. Um, the Poisson distributions um, um, are the a probability distribution that indicate how probable it is to have uh, 0, 1, 2, and uh, n steps within a certain um, time interval. Um, that is, if we execute a, a repeated um, um, probability experiment with an uh, exponential distribution, um, uh, we get the uh, Poisson probabilities. Of course, we need a, a uniform uh, um, a uniform rate for these experiments, but here we can just take the maximal rate that is in our system um, to have an upper estimation. Um, okay, of course it is, uh, for, for small time intervals, like in, in, in small epsilon interval, it is very probable that no step happens, but for this case we don't have to optimize at all as our actions don't have any effect, our choices have, don't have any effect. So we only have to care for the last three uh, uh, cases here. Um, we see that these probabilities uh, decrease really, really fast, even if we are, well, have, a, have a moderate epsilon. And in fact, for a small epsilon, um, the uh, Poisson probabilities um, uh, to take uh, more than k steps are, are this. It's the uh, lambda times epsilon to the k power of k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 to factorial. So it is, um, so the, um, Nominator um, decreases really fast and the uh, denominator increases really fast. This really converges amazingly fast to zero. And that was our motivation. So and this, first of all, uh, well, justifies that we just consider uh, that one step happens and just make epsilon small enough and uh, uh, then we, well, we, we know that we only omit a really small uh, proportion of the probability mass. But we thought that it might be, uh, might be an advantage to consider just more than one step in one interval. Um, we, well, for example, one could allow two steps per interval. And uh, let's consider what happens if we allow uh, for two steps uh, to happen in an interval. Um, um, we, we have these equations again. We want to, um, 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 we have these, these equations and that uh, should, and we want to approximate for the case that two or more step, uh, two or less steps um, uh, may happen. That is, if we if one step happens, we end up in one of the kind of one of the successor states, and so we need an estimate for the successor states that considers the case that um, another step may happen. But we have computed this already. That was the Euler approximation. So we just make one pass of the um, state space, compute the Euler approximations, and then we make a second pass, this, uh, like, like here, and replace the uh, uh, reachability probabilities by the linear estimations we got from the Euler approximation. What happens in this case, we have a, then a linear combination over uh, linear functions and maximize over these, so we maximize, we, we, we need the pointwise maximum over a set of linear functions, which is, well, easy to compute, and we can also easily integrate over this, uh, over this uh, function. And, and this results in a, a, a really improved, um, upper bound, uh, an improved error bound, well, mainly because of the uh, Poisson probabilities, as I showed you before. Um, the, uh, per interval, the error bound improves from an epsilon square error to an epsilon cube error. Um, so this allows us to take far less intervals, that is the square root of t over pi instead of t over pi. And now, of course, the natural question is, can't we allow more? And indeed we can, and this leads then to the, uh, to the factor of, um, or to the improvement to uh, the kth root of t over pi, many intervals which we have to consider. However, the um, calculations per interval, uh, so the, the cost of the calculations per interval increases dramatically once we uh, uh, pass a certain, th certain threshold. But we'll come to that later. First of all, I want to show you the actual impact this has on, on, an, um, on, on a real example or a small example. Um, here we have a, well, one of the standard examples uh, for CTMDPs uh, in the literature. Um, we compare our tool for, well, which allows for uh, up to two steps happens, uh, happen within an interval 
to the state of the R2 uh, Markov reward model checker. Um, this actually implements some uh, rather, well, some, some really nice uh, heuristical um, speed ups, and it's, uh, well, it, it is already uh, much faster than the uh, standard Euler approximation. And we see that uh, e even for, for um, allowing up to two steps per interval, we improve over this, however, not so dramatically, one could argue. If we allow for three steps, the picture looks quite different. For example, uh, for a precision of 10 to the minus 7, um, we see that uh, the speed up is already in the order of 100. Um, for, for 10 to the minus 8, the picture looks even different, e even better for, to, for our tool, but I, I'm not sure whether this is not, it's not an artifact or something. Um, so, what actually happens if we allow for uh, three or more steps, or th three or other, sorry, for up to three steps per interval, um, we, ha we have to make a, another pass over the state space and replace our, the reachability probabilities by this quadratic estimate, which we computed before. Um, this means that we have to find intersections between uh, small, um, um, small polynomials of degree two, um, but this is still works fine. This also works fine for uh, polynomials of degree um, three, so if we now want to, to make another pass, another level, um, this would work uh, as well, uh, fine. We could uh, still find the solution uh, analytically. However, if we go to higher degrees, um, we would have to employ approximation methods for finding the polynomial, polynomial degrees, which for, for finding the intersections between the polynomials, um, which would then uh, probably uh, cost a significant, uh, uh, so would, would, would lead not to an improved uh, performance, we think. Um, additionally, um, it is the case that the lesser, the less intervals we have, the more um, intersections per interval uh, we will find. So this will also decrease then the um, uh, number of, uh, so the, the performance. And it's even the case that the number of uh, um, intersections per interval could increase, or in theory, dramatically. In practical examples, this has to be found rather irrelevant. However, one, one could probably construct some examples where this is dramatic. So we argue that a small constant like two, three, four, five or so should do. Um, okay, that's it. Um, to summarize, uh, we, we propose a parametric approximation algorithm that um, um, improves uh, the worst case complexity. And we have shown that it, on reasonable examples, um, imp uh, pro uh, improves, uh, sorry, is practical and uh, can be implemented. So thanks. <laughs>